Hello class, this video is for the default project deliverable number two, creating a web server. I'm going to be uh, doing this video on Windows 10 as a host so that my system resembles yours as much as possible. I'm going to try to keep the video short, uh, but it's not going to be separated into multiple videos like the previous one that we have available in the channel at the moment. We're going to try to do it all in one video. I'm going to try to put timestamps on the video description as well, so let's get started. Um, I already have VirtualBox installed on my computer, and I already have the page open over here, uh, project, web server project, which is this one over here. So we need to create a virtual machine that meets this requirement over here, right? So we need one CPU core, one gigabyte of RAM, and 10 gigabytes of space, right? This is the minimum. You can increase it if you want to, but that's going to be the minimum for the server install. So let's click on, let's click on new. We're going to call this Ubuntu server. The ISO image, we need to get it from Ubuntu. download Ubuntu server, get Ubuntu server, and then just click on download Ubuntu server and you should get the download file. I have already downloaded the server ISO file as you can see over here just to keep the video short. This is the one we want Ubuntu 22.04.3 live server AMD 64 So I'm going to select my ISO here, let's click on other, downloads, and then Ubuntu live server open. Now we're going to skip unattended installation, we want to do this manually. Now here we have the base memory, 2 gigabytes. You, I, I have enough RAM on my system to give it 2 gigabytes, but if you are a little bit short on RAM, 1 gig should be fine. And uh, in CPU cores, I'm going to give it 2 CPU cores. again. You can, do, you can deal with one, the server doesn't have a lot of requirements, but a lot of times I see that with one core it might struggle or not install at all. So if you're having that issue, increase the number of cores over here and it should be fine. Um, again, for the RAM, two gigabytes is more than enough. Um, you can even do it with 512 megabytes, right? So that's fine. So let's click on next. Uh, the storage here, 25 is the default. I'm gonna bring that down to like around 15 because this is just gonna be very small. Then we're gonna click on next. Again, you can be, if you have a lot of storage to spare, don't do more than 25. The server takes almost no space at all. So it's not, 25 is overkill for what we are going to do over here. Now I'm gonna click on finish here. Then I'm going to adjust some of the settings, I'm going to go to this, we're going to leave it as is because this is not going to install a graphical interface, so this is a waste. In the description, let's type the host name, I'm going to call this one web server, and for the user, right, we're going to call this one web master, but you can pick any username you want, I just like to have notes over here to um, for later, and for the password, I am going to check our super secure password. Again, this is a testing environment. This is not for production, so we should keep things as simple as possible. In other words, this is a proof of concept. So if we start putting complicated things over here, we might screw things up later on for ourselves. And we don't want that. We want to keep it simple. In production, we don't want it simple. We want it secure. But this is not a production environment. Now in system here, everything is fine, except that we don't need a floppy disk over here, but the rest is okay. okay. Uh, this we're going to leave it as is. If you want to increase something, you can do it. This stays as is. The display here, I like to bring it all the way till the end, even on a server, um, even, on a, even on, on an Ubuntu server. And we're not going to need 3D, 3D acceleration because there will not be a desktop environment installed over here. Uh, when it comes to audio, we're going to disable audio. This, this is a server, no need for an audio car. With map work, we're going to play around with this later, so leave it as is and the rest stay as is. Click OK, and now we're going to click on Start. You can do two things now. You can pause the video and just follow the instructions over here that will show you a screen by a screen what you need to do, or you can just watch how I do it and then replicate it on your side. These instructions over here were made with a slightly er earlier version of Ubuntu Server, so some of the um, 
screenshots might not translate one to one especially because this is the older installer but the newer installer is also quite simple as this one as well so there shouldn't be that much difference so I'm going to skip all the way to part number three and going back to my installer over here from this point on we don't um, we're not gonna we're just gonna follow this this uh, screen prompts over here all we have to do now is wait until the installer boots up and the installer is already online so the first thing is pick your language I'm gonna pick English over here we're gonna click inside so that our mouse and keyboard is captured here we're just gonna go enter I'm going to update to the new installer if you want your screen to look exactly like the instructions don't update the installer it's not gonna be a problem but I want the new one so we're gonna use the new installer now we're gonna pick our keyboard layout automatically you know it's gonna uh, um, it's gonna know that my computer is using an English US keyboard so I'm just gonna click on done now here we got we have a couple of options we are going to install the default Ubuntu server not the server minimal that's the one we want and we don't need additional drivers so we're gonna leave this as is and just press enter now it's gonna detect my IP it's a it's a, it's a NAT right now so it's gonna be local we're gonna click on done here we're gonna click on done let it automatically determine which is gonna be the mirror for the software software for downloading software and things like that and yep it automatically detected and it's good to go now here we're gonna click on enter use the entire disk we're not gonna do partitioning or anything like that so here I'm gonna press the tab key on my keyboard and click on done here I'm just gonna click on done and then continue now we're gonna type our name what is your name I'm just gonna pick my username for this web server the server name is gonna be web uh, sorry web master little mistake over there my apologies server's name this is the host name web server pick a username again web master and then pick a password and then type the password one more time once you have completed this form done now we are not going to enable ubuntu pro skip for now we don't need none of that Install OpenSSH server, that we want, but we want nothing else, just to install the SSH server. We're gonna do the rest manually. We don't need none of these microservices, so just press tab and done. And now, go grab a cup of coffee, you know, glass of water, some juice, whatever you want, because in 15 minutes or less, this installer will be, will, com will finish. I will pause the video now and then resume once the installer has complete the installation. Oh, okay so the installer has finished installing once you see let me click again here once you see the option for reboot now that's when you press enter and let the virtual machine restart now sometimes it can hold at that particular moment over there don't freak out all you have to do is either press enter or manually reset the virtual machine and it will be all right we're gonna let it boot up again and we're gonna do a, an update and then we're gonna proceed with the um, tutorial almost done okay now again when you see this screen don't freak out all you have to do is press enter over here and you're gonna see a login prompt different from our Ubuntu desktop interface here all we have is a TTY or a terminal so all we have to do here is type the username and the password our username was webmaster unless you picked a different one and the password is the one that we typed earlier this is the login screen of Ubuntu server that gives you a bit of a summary of how your, your server is at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is do an update and then we're going to take uh, a snapshot of our machine. We're going to be taking several snapshots as we go so that if something goes wrong we can always revert back to that particular state. So sudo apt update and we also want to do once this command executes successfully sudo apt upgrade minus y enter oh 
okay this update shouldn't take long because our server has very little packages installed at the moment and because we also downloaded the latest version available on the website so this update shouldn't take more than what two three minutes or so it's already at 98 percent so we so that's good okay when you are when you are presented with this screen all you have to do is tab and then a space or you can do tab and enter that will work as well okay now we're gonna turn this computer off and take a snapshot for that all we have to do is type shut down and then pass the argument of now and this will turn the virtual machine off now we're gonna click on the three dots over here to open this hamburger menu and click on the snapshots. We're gonna click on take. We're gonna call it a snapshot one, OS installed. Here in the description, we're gonna put latest update and today's date. For me, that will be 10, 29, uh, 23. Click okay and we're done with that part let's go back to the instructions so over here we have that now we need to install apache and installing apache is quite simple all we have to do we did the update already all we have to do is install is sudo apt install apache 2 just like we install any other program in our system so let's minimize that turn this virtual machine on and get to work Okay, now for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to change the view to a scale mode. And I am going to increase the size over here so that you can read what I type a little bit better. This is as good as it's going to get because remember, there is no graphical interface on the server environment. So we cannot go full screen like we do with the Ubuntu desktop. Press enter over here and type our username and password. Okay, now let's clear the screen and type sudo apt install apache2. Okay, now this is the summary, all of the packages that are going to be installed with this one and all the dependencies. Press Y and enter. And this, install, this installation should be very fast and smooth. Sounds good. So now I'm going to put this side by side so that we can start following the instructions and the commands one next to each other. I'm going to clear the screen on this one one more time. Now we're going to move on to part number four, setting up SSH. This, the first thing we need to do is to enable the, fire, the firewall. So we're going to do sudo uf w enable firewall has been enabled now we're going to add apache and open ssh as exceptions to our firewall so we're going to do sudo ufw allow apache and sudo ufw allow open SSH okay now the rules have been applied successfully now we're gonna check the status of our firewall sudo UFW status and we can see that Apache and open SSH are successfully allowed so connections are gonna come through to our virtual machine via these two services the next thing we need to do is restart um, the Apache 2 service and the SSH service. So we do that with sudo system control Apache 2 and we're gonna do no pager here Oops. 
I missed something on the command. We missed the status. This is going to tell us the status, whether Apache 2 is running. And yes, it's running. If you want to restart the service, we can do restart. And if you want to stop the service, you can just change this to a stop. If you want to start the service, guess what? You do a start. And that's it. Now let's check the status one more time. It's running. We're going to do the same thing, but for SSH. Let's see if this is running. Yep, it's running. We don't need to restart that service because it's already running. Okay. Now we need a way to connect to this virtual machine. So what I'm going to do in this one is that I'm going to connect to this virtual machine using my Windows terminal. So essentially, we are going to control this virtual machine directly from our host operating system. If you cannot have two virtual machines running simultaneously, this is a good option. If you want to control it using the Ubuntu desktop environment, essentially from the desktop controlling the server, then you're going to have to have both virtual machines running simultaneously. Right, but again, both machines need to be running at the same time. And if your system doesn't have the resources to keep them up, you, your computer will freeze right away. So we don't want that. We want to uh, be able to do this as fast and efficient as possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this computer off. So we're going to do um, shut down now. Good. So now we are going to go back to details and then settings. There are two ways for us to connect to this server. And this is when you need to make a decision which one of them you're going to use. In the network section, NAT means that our virtual machine is isolated from everything. It is getting an IP address from our computer, but that is in an isolated network, which means that our host machine cannot talk or cannot communicate with the virtual machine. To fix this, we can do either a bridge adapter, which what is going to do, just like the name entails, is going to bridge the network adapter of my computer to the virtual machine, making my virtual machine acquire an IP address from my router. That, was mean, that means that my virtual machine and my host computer will be in the same network so they can talk to each other. Remember that the IP address of my virtual machine was 10 that something. But the IP address of this computer is 192.168.1.42. I need this virtual machine to be in the same network. Bridging the network adapter is going to solve that for me. The problem is that that doesn't work for everybody. Depending on your computer and whether your computer has the possibility, that ability, some computers, some network adapters don't allow you to bridge the, uh, an adapter to a virtual machine. Some routers prevent you from getting an IP address if you have a bridge network adapter. For example, in the college, if you're doing this in your laptop and you go to the college and you turn on the virtual machine, you're going to realize that the VM doesn't get an IP address. And that's because the, the network at the college is configured in such a way that it blocks any bridge network adapter from getting an IP address from the routers at school. And because of this, there is another option which is called port forwarding. Essentially, we are going to enable this machine while using a NAT adapter to send communication using a port on our local computer or our host to a port in the virtual machine. So first, I'm going to do the bridge adapter mode, and then I'm going to show you the port forwarding mode. Then you choose which one you want to use. My advice is, if you're doing this project in your laptop, do port forwarding, because your laptop is portable. Sometimes you're at home, sometimes you're at the college, sometimes you're at a cafe. So you don't know what may go wrong. But with port forwarding, we kind of isolate most of those problems and make it so that we can always connect to our machine. If you are doing it in a desktop like I am right now, try bridge adapter first because it's simpler. Less steps and the commands are shorter. So we're going to change this to bridge. Click OK. And now we're going to turn the, the machine one more time. This is what I just explained to you right now. And these are the instructions for port forwarding. But we're going to hold on to that for a moment. Here is what we're trying to do. Now, 
these are the steps that we're gonna follow at the moment so let's wait until the machine turns on that looks a little better doesn't it okay now let's log in web master notice that the IP address of my server 192.168.1.85 which is right there IP before it is in the same network as my host computer and by the way this here this application this terminal is called Windows terminal if you don't have it in your computer just download it by googling Windows terminal app and it is this one over here available from the Microsoft App Store all you have to do is click install and it will install if you're using Windows 11 this application is already installed for you if you're in Windows 10 it might not be available for you unless you are in the latest version of Windows 10 but I am not so I have to install it okay so now we're gonna keep this in this open over here just gonna put it here underneath for now the first thing that we need to do is need, we need to make sure that open SSH is installed in our computer it should be installed on Windows so if you type SSH you should get something like this right it's not gonna tell you command not found it's gonna tell you hey you know you type the command wrong if you get this out it means that SSH is installing your machine as far as I know Windows 10 and 11 they both have open SSH already installed in your computer but if you don't then you'll have to install it yourself but I highly doubt that's the problem you're having now let's clear the screen over here in uh, Windows that would be the CLS command and now let's try to connect to our virtual machine what we're gonna do is type SSH as you can see in the example over here SSH username that would be the username in our server SSH webmaster at and then the IP address of our virtual machine that would be 192.168.1.85 right your virtual, your IP address is obviously gonna be different than mine but all you have to do is look at IP before address ENP0S3 that line over there is what contains your IP address press enter over here and we're gonna type yes now type the password that you use to sign in on the server and you have successfully connected to your server machine now we can just clear over here and we every command that we type over here is going to be sent to our to our machine and executed in our server virtual machine which is really neat now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to turn off that server machine so i'm going to type sudo shutdown now and notice that the machine is off when you start working here all you have to do is type the tooltip arrow over here and click on headless start this is going to start the virtual machine in the background i'm going to repeat that going to start the virtual machine in the background right so your virtual machine is on so remember when you're done working remember to turn it off if you think that you're not going to remember that just start your vm regularly we are gonna do this because with this it's gonna be easier for us to copy and paste commands from the instructions to the Windows terminal over here considering that the server machine doesn't have guest additions or a way to install guest additions in it because it doesn't have a desktop interface or a desktop environment also this simulates how things are done in the real world right you don't know where your servers are you can have a servers in China for example you're not gonna take a plane to go and troubleshoot a server in China no we do what it is an SSH connection and then we administer servers that way okay so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna repeat the SSH command that we typed before all you have to do is remember the IP address of your server this may change if you move from one network to another so keep that in mind if your SSH command is not working make sure that the IP address is correct and that you type the username correctly type enter over here notice that it didn't ask me the question that it asked me before because it already saved the SSH key and it already saved my virtual machine in the known host list which is a file that contains all the computers that that successfully have connected to the server so now we're gonna type PCC here for my password and I'm connected now we can continue the 
uh, process over here. This is using a bridge adapter. It is as simple as that. Now, we are gonna try to do, right, if you are successfully, if you were successfully connected to your server, you can just continue with the instructions. You can skip the next part where I'm gonna do the port forwarding. If this didn't work for you, then try to do port forwarding, which is what I'm gonna demonstrate now and see if you can get a work like that. If neither of the two work for you, get in contact with me via Slack and we can do a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we can troubleshoot this for you. Just don't wait until the last minute because I might not be available at that particular point. Okay, so now let's get to work. I'm gonna turn the virtual machine off again, so we're gonna do sudo shutdown now. And notice that the preview over here showed the virtual machine off. See that the status here says power off. So I'm gonna click on settings, and I'm gonna go to network, and I'm gonna change bridge to NAT. Then I'm gonna click on advance, and I'm gonna click on port forwarding. I'm gonna add a new rule by clicking on the icon over here, and let me just resize this, right? Because this is gonna be useful for me. And all you have to do is type the same thing you see over here. So what would be the host port? Well, we're gonna choose port 22222, right? And then what would be the guest port? That's gonna be port 22, because that is the port that SSH uses by default. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but this is gonna be for HTTP. So port 80, right? We're gonna forward port 80. So port 8080 in our host computer here is gonna be forwarded to port 80 in our virtual machine over here, right? We're good. We're gonna click on okay, and we're done on that part. Now we're gonna click on a start. I wanna show you something. Switch, let's move it up a little bit. Yes, allow access, this is, obviously the firewall in Windows is gonna tell me, hey, a new port forwarding rule was added to your computer, right? Do you wanna allow this access, yes or no? If you click on cancel, this is not gonna work. But if you click on allow, obviously this is going to work. So we're gonna allow access so that our Windows machine can successfully connect to our server machine. So here we're gonna type webmaster and then pccc. Oops. You would believe that I could not type that correctly. That's just crazy. Now notice over here, IP address went back to 10.0.2.15, which we're back on getting a NAT address that is only available in that particular VM, right? This doesn't mean that that VM cannot connect to the internet. As you saw, we successfully download packages from the internet. And if I try ping google.com, should be able to ping as well. So this computer successfully connects to the internet. That's not the issue. It's just that the connection is isolated to the machine itself and nothing else can, can be seen. So we're gonna type control Z as in zebra to stop that command from running. We're not gonna clear the screen. To connect using port forwarding, the formula is just like this one you see over here. Uh, where are you? I wanna show you an exact command. There you go. Here it is. I want to show you a command there you go so that you can save this for yourself like if you're using port forwarding this is the command that you will use essentially what this is doing is start an SSH connection using port 2222 using the username provided and using the local host IP address which is 127.0.0.1 that is the computer local IP address. That IP, it's only for that computer itself. That's what is called the host IP, right? So what we're gonna do here is we are gonna type SSH minus P to specify the port, 2222, and then a username, which is gonna be webmaster, again, the username of our virtual machine, and that over here we are gonna put at, which means to where you wanna connect, 127, that zero, that zero, that one. What is it, this exactly doing? Well, SSH is gonna send a SSH connection to our network interface card, to our host machine. But when that arrives, it's gonna notice that you specified a port. Because we allow that port to be forwarded somewhere else, the computer is gonna say, oh wait, hold on. Where is port 2022? 2222 or 20 or 2222 going well that is going to port 22 
on this virtual machine and it's gonna forward that connection using that port that's exactly what this is doing over here press enter and notice that we're asked again to provide that connection we're gonna type yes we want to connect this add this to the non host file here type your password and notice that we have successfully connected to our virtual machine Again, port forwarding is gonna work regardless of which network you are on, which is the reason why if you're using a laptop, port forwarding makes more sense. If you are on a desktop, well, a bridge adapter you saw was much, much easier. It was a one-click thing away, and the command is obviously much shorter. Hence why I recommend for desktop to use a bridge network adapter, okay? Now, I'm gonna keep using bridge network adapter over here until we get to later on so we're gonna clear the screen over here I can just minimize this because I don't need this open now that we have done this I want to talk a little bit about this if you want to use public key and private key authentication with your SSA with your virtual machine you can I gave you instructions over here but that's not required you don't have to what that's gonna allow you is to connect more securely to your to your, to your server and it's gonna mimic mostly how we do it on the real world. When you're connecting to a server on the cloud, we normally use private and publicly authentication. So that's a good practice if you're a web development student. Now, in all the videos on the channel, I have already demonstrated how this works. But I think the instructions are good enough. So if you wanna do it on your own, you can. This is very similar to how we connected to GitHub. Remember from lab number two? That's the same, the same concept over here. So I'm gonna go straight to this part over here, which is part five, setting up virtual host. But before I do that, I wanna show you something. First, let's see the status of Apache. System control status Apache 2. We know that it's running. Now, the if I go over here and I type 127.0.0.1 port 8080, it should take me to Apache's configuration page. This is the default web page that is served by the Apache installation when you just install the service, right? If you did port forwarding, you should be able to see this. If you didn't, if you did a bridge network adapter, type in your um, server's IP address on the search bar of any web browser should send you to this page over here. Okay, now let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna create, for, but first of all, you should read this. Take a second, read this, because it's gonna explain you exactly what we're gonna do. So for sake of time, I'm just gonna follow the steps over here, but you should definitely read that because it's gonna come very handy when you're doing the liveable number two and three. So I'm gonna click enter over here. Oops, sorry. There you go, Q. Oh my God, Windows, what are you doing? There you go, I don't wanna hear you. Now let's create a folder inside the www directory. So we're gonna do sudo, obviously, because we don't have access to that particular folder yet as a regular user, mkdir var www, and then I'm gonna call this my website. You wanna call it something else, just make sure that you change my website for whatever you wanna use. Okay, now we are gonna mo modify the ownership of that, of that folder so that our user can do whatever it pleases on that particular folder. So we're gonna do sudo change owner minus r. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. Because we're using our Windows terminal over here and this is in our, in our web server, we can just copy this and paste it over here. You can paste on the Windows terminal by simply uh, right clicking over here. You right click and it pastes, as you saw over there. You can also do Control V, by the way. Okay, now let's change the permissions. Again, all I have to do is copy this and paste. sudo change mode minus R for recursive. 7555, once we cover the chapter on permissions, you'll understand what that 755 means. And then we're gonna change the permission on this folder and any other folder that's created inside here so that we can create files there without sudo. Now we are gonna create an index.html file. 
in our my website directory and we can do that by using the nano text editor and then just typing this over here right so we can just do sudo nano var www my website and here we type index.html so, sorry index.html perfect now we have an empty fault file over here that we can either copy paste this or you can type it yourself if you want Oh, I guess I'm typing. And now we're just gonna add a body, body tag. Here we're gonna put an H1, and we're just gonna call this. This is a sample document. There is a typo on that H1 element. Is H1 good? And now we're gonna close the body tag. And we are also going to close the HTML tag. And that's fine. Let's indent this a little bit, right? Just so it looks nice. Done. To save this, all we have to do is press Ctrl O, Enter. Control X to exit and our file has been successfully saved there. We can see that because if we do ls var www my website we should see an index.html file and if we do cat to show the content of the file we should see that it has our website that we just read inside there. So we should be fine from this point on. Now if you don't want to use nano, you can copy paste this over here and it should do the exact same thing that we just did. For example, I'm going to remove that file. Sorry, that's the proper command. And if I copy this and paste it over here, it should do exactly the same thing. If I repeat the ls command, I should see index.html there because that's exactly what this is going to do. It's going to download a basic HTML template just like that, simple line, single line of, of just this is a sample website, and then it's going to save it over here in this particular file. Okay, now we need to create a virtual host file, and for that, all we have to do is this. This is where the location of that file is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file just like we did before. So we're gonna copy paste this. Right, which is gonna create a mywebsite.conf file for creating the new site. All you have to do is copy this text over here and paste it in your text editor. Once you do, not trailing a space, control O to save, enter and Control X to exit. Remember that if you chose a different name for your website, you also need to change it over here. Okay, now we need to enable the site. So simple sudo a2 The new, the new the new one has been enabled. Now we need to disable the default one. So sudo a to d this site zero zero default dot conf. Done. 
now before we can refresh this because otherwise we're going to get a little bit a little bit of an error message we need to add this line to our apache that apache 2.conf file if you don't do this you're going to see a bit of an error message when we um, try to refresh this um, configuration so we're going to avoid that error message by doing this right now all we have to do is go to the bottom of this file and type server name 127.0.0.1 server name 127.0.0.1 control o to save x to exit now we can test this configuration and see if everything comes okay sudo apache control config test if you receive syntax okay that means that you are good to continue now we're gonna restart the Apache service service has been restarted now you can simply go to our new site by going to opening a new tab on your web browser and typing your IP address of your server and then index.html right now if you're using port forwarding like I am you will need to do this just like I did over here remember 127.0.0.0.1.8080 if you're not using port forwarding just the IP address of your server should suffice over here if you get this congratulations you did it correctly and now you have completed deliverable number two all you have to do is prepare your document for submission in your um, desktop in your Ubuntu desktop take any screenshots that you need to take put them in your desktop you, you know the drill simple markdown I will see you on the video for deliverable number three Take care. If you have any questions, slack me and we can get together over Zoom or we can see each other during class. Take care.